you all so much for joining me on the webcast today. I am very excited about this What's New in Revit 25 presentation because just like the last several years, there are tons of new improvements to this latest release of Revit. That being said, we have a lot to get through today, not only because there's uh, so much new improvements, but also we are covering all disciplines and users of Revit today. So there is a good chance we might run over the top of the hour just a little bit if that is the case and you need to drop off the call at that time, no hard feelings and you can catch anything you missed on the uh, recording. Um, I would also like to thank Alice Craig for joining to monitor the question panel. So if you have a question, feel free to go ahead and ask away and Alice will try to get you an answer. Uh, you know, if we do have time for live Q&A at the end, um, you know, you can save your question for then, but it might be best just to go ahead and type it in while you're thinking about it. Um, and if we can't get you an answer on the call today, I'll be sure to follow up once I receive the report in the next week or so. So as we go through the new features in Revit 2025, you will see they fall under these six key themes. And this sort of serves as our outline for the presentation today. We have design productivity, sustainability, analysis, interoperability, cloud and data, and documentation efficiency. Um, furthermore, here is a list of features for design productivity. I'll give everyone a second or two to peruse the list here, and it will actually continue on the next slide. So you see we got a lot of stuff to cover here today. Um, gonna be a lot of slides for the site design. And here's a breakdown of the additional features for design productivity. Now we also have sustainability, analysis, interoperability, and cloud data. Again, I'll just give you a second to take a look at this list here. See if anything catches your eye. And then finally, here are the features for documentation efficiency. There's some great improvements here. So you wanna make sure you stick around uh, till the very end here. Some stuff I'm really excited about in this one. So, the first key theme we will focus on here is design productivity. Revit 2025, you can automatically join or join and lock a newly created architectural wall with the adjacent one. Any inserted elements, whether it's doors or windows, will perforate both walls. Uh, just some things to be aware of. Uh, complex cuts will not cut through both the aligned and locked walls. Uh, we're only talking simple cuts here. Um, so like I said, it is going to be perfect for doors and windows. Uh, the auto join and auto join and lock options are only available while using the architectural walls. These options are not available when modeling structural walls, face-based walls, stacked walls, and curtain walls. Newly created slanted walls cannot align with existing slanted or tapered wall. So the auto join and lock does not work for it. Uh, you can use the auto join in this case. Existing adjacent walls modeled in previous Revit versions will not automatically join when upgrading to the new version, but you could still um, manually join those. When I was testing this, I noticed that you can act you, that you actually have to select one of the options while drawing the wall. I had best luck using wall location line set to finish face, which you can see here. Here's a quick little demo I did for you. So here I'm using finish face exterior, I'm just drawing a couple basic walls. 
uh, just putting two right next to each other. Now I'm ready for the auto join feature. You see, I click that on the ribbon. And then for the next one, I'll do the auto join and lock. So you will see a difference in behavior here. Place the door in here on both, and then we'll do a window and you'll see it cuts through both. Now, if we use the move tool on the auto join one, it'll separate. But if we use the move tool on the auto join and locked one, it will stay joined together. And I'm kind of surprised it took this long, but super happy that we can now allow or disallow the wall end wrapping conditions with controls and plan views. When wall layer wrapping is enabled for wall ends, the wrapping behavior of each wall end can be changed with the control located near the wall end. The control is only visible when the wall is selected in a plan view. Click the control to change the wrapping behavior of the layers at the wall end. And hit a little video showing what it looks like in Revit. You can see you have to ensure the wrapping is turned on in the type properties then you can see the new uh, toggle icons in plan. Control that wrapping. Curtain wall mullions now use profiles with multiple loops. For example, they can use profiles with voids inside, which will show a lot more detail than just the outer faces. This will lead to a lot more model accuracy. So it is very nice to have the option for this if you need it. Uh, this one is great and something I had struggled with for years, but thankfully now you can uh, flex both linear and radial arrays to values of one or zero in the family editor. This feature works as expected for both linear and radial arrays, and is only available within the family editor environment. Historically, I used to have to have two families, one for a single instance and one for multiple, but now it can all be in one family. Uh, with an empty array, we can now have the array as an option without an unignorable error. Needless to say, I'm pretty happy about this one. Now, you might remember last year, the site design tools were majorly overhauled from surfaces into solids. And there are a whole slew of enhancements to go over here. When working with legacy files containing topo surfaces and building pads, converting the topo surface to a topo solid retains the building pads as excavated areas on the topo solid. Uh, the legacy topo surfaces and building pads are preserved alongside the topo solid you can control its visibility under the topography category. You can now create topo solids on any vertical faces of a mass using the topo solid by face tool. You can inspect the related to mass parameter to verify if the topo solid is created from a mass or not. Uh, the topo solid made from a model by face is an extrusion. However, this creation method differs from the topo solid made from uh, sketch import, resulting in limited shape editor functions available for the model by face topo solid. Uh, you cannot select faces from different masses for the same topo solid. This feature will be extremely useful when modern modeling complex topography. You can now use a floor, roof, or a, another topo solid as a cutting element to excavate a topo solid. The volume reported by the host topo is adjusted as the element is excavated by the other elements. Remove the excavation to fill the excavated volume. Uh, the element used to excavate will remain in the model. You can also use the legacy pads as a cutter geometry to excavate a topo solid. There are cases that the excavate will fail due to the sharp triangulation facets uh, that exist near the cutter element, or the point is located on the edge of a cutter element. You can adjust the topo point height just a little bit to avoid the uh, sharp shapes. 
In Revit 2025, you can use excavation parameters to know the exact amount of soil being removed by Boolean operations by other elements. For this, they introduced two new parameters, the individual excavation volume leading to the dialogue that shows all the cutter elements that cut that particular topo solid. And two, the total excavation volume shows how much soil has been taken out of this topo solid instance. These are not editable, but you can create very useful schedules for those parameters. For instance, you could use them as schedule filters to display volumes by topo solid types or do a multi-category schedule with filters to display all elements cutting a particular topo solid. In previous versions, shaft openings would cut through the entire topo solid element. Now the bottom of the shaft is respected as the depth limit of the cutoff. Note that the cutoff volume by a shaft is not tracked in schedule. So you'll, you'll want to use a floor, roof, or mass excavation instead. In previous years, face-based families could not recognize the faces created from Boolean operation in Revit 2025. The exposed surfaces of a cut topo solid are now able to host other elements. Site components will recognize these exposed faces as a topo solid. This means that the Boolean surface act just as the original surface of the topo solid element and will allow you to host elements like a railing or a planting element. Uh, there is now, this is more of a visual thing here, there's an option to smooth the display of topo solid elements, which removes the triangulated appearance of the surface in your model at a project level. Enable the topo solid smooth shading option in the site panel drop down menu. Smooth shading is visible in views using shaded, consistent colors, textures, and realistic visual styles. The smooth appearance is maintained when you print and export if enabled. Uh, some limitations that you'll want to be aware of are that surface patterns of topo solids will not display when the topo solid smooth shading is enabled. Uh, you cannot place a decal on a smooth topo solid, and material display cannot be overridden with paint or graphics overrides. If the topo solid is in an RVT link, users have to smooth it in the original RVT file, then reload it to see the smooth shading in the host file. This one is very helpful as Revit 2025 enables the display of contour lines in uh, slab shaped editor mode if they are visible in the view. Previously, no contours can be seen from the topo solid editing mode. The contour display responds to visibility graphics overrides and the contour setting in topo solid type properties. And finally, you can enable or disable the snapping to internal points and edges when in shape editing mode. The option is available when editing floors, roofs, and topo solids. The option is cleared by default, meaning the internal points and edges are ignored. The current snap behavior in the along surface and absolute only capture the XY position of a reference geometry. The new snap XYZ snaps to the Z coordinate of any visible geometry, including DWGs and links. Uh, some limitations to be aware of are snapping cannot detect points of a spline line. You'll also need to ensure that the view range is set to display the entire reference object. The snap sequence prioritizes the midpoint and endpoint. And when snapping to loadable families, it is best to switch to a 3D view to ensure that you snap to the appropriate point. So that wraps up the site design enhancements here. Uh, what's next? Well, for all you Dynamo enthusiasts out there like myself, Dynamo 3.0.3 introduces 
package management in a single location, node search by category, improved Revit sample graphs, and more. Some of the highlights include working better with linked models. Multiple nodes are available to work with linked instances, allowing you to understand the position and transforms applied to linked elements, as well as work with their properties. Uh, with improved interactions with geometry, you can locate Revit geometry based on the detail level using the new detail level and element.getGeometry nodes and access the element ID associated with the geometry. Clicking on the green element ID button in Dynamo will now also zoom to fit on linked elements in Revit. Uh, this goes well with all the other site updates. There are now topo solid nodes. Utilize topo solid nodes to generate topo solid elements within Revit. Uh, we also have a new package manager. The new package manager dialog provides a single location for locating and managing packages. In the package manager, you'll find the following. You can search with new filtering options to view packages with or without dependencies on other packages. Package details panel that opens in the package manager window. Updated workflow to upload a new package or new version of an existing package. A list of all currently installed packages, a list of the packages you've uploaded, as well as access to your package settings. You can now search for nodes by category. This improvement to the search enables you to specify node categories with a period. For example, searching for list.r returns nodes that belong to the list category and begin with the letter R. Uh, there's now a more readable watch node text. Multi-line text is more readable in watch nodes. Scroll bars when needed are visible by default, and you can use the resize handle to display more text. You will now find updated Revit sample files. The Dynamo sample files are under help samples Revit. Uh, they've been updated to include helpful descriptions that assist you in the graph. This update also eliminates overlapping and deprecated nodes. Uh, gate node and remember node can now be found in the Dynamo library. The gate node allows you contr to control the execution and sections of your graph. An open gate passes data through unchanged, while a closed gate sends no data downstream. Um, a remember node stores the data passing through it to the Dynamo file and returns the stored data if the input is null. So all in all, these enhancements will provide you with an improved experience when developing your automation workflows. Uh, now in 25, just back inside regular old Revit. Uh, when searching in your project browser, you can view all the child nodes when the parent node contains the keywords uh, so that users can get better searching results than before when they cannot remember the accurate words in the child nodes. Here are a few examples of how the search currently works. When the parent node contains the keywords and some of the child nodes contain the keywords, the search returns all the child nodes under the parent node in the search list. When the parent node contains the keywords, but no child nodes contain the keywords, the search result lists all the child nodes, but collapses them after searching. Bottom line is that this makes the search more efficient and useful, especially such as searching for families. The dark theme is now enabled for first level user interface and in shared views. It includes the properties palette, project browser, options bar, view control bar, and status bar. You can also set the drawing area theme to dark or light, both from the ribbon and the options dialog. This feature improves the consistency of the Revit user interface 
ultimately optimizing the user experience, which will lead to a seamless and consistent visual experience. Now in Revit, you can splice one or several rebar sets at the selected position. Splice by length and modify the splices as needed. Click along a rebar set to splice at that position or select a line reference in the view to splice all intersecting sets. Select and edit the splice type to adjust lap length splice line position, uniform or staggered layout, as well as bar shift. Alternatively, you can splice selected sets by length according to the specified values of maximum length, minimum length, and runout position. Uh, furthermore, the functionality extends to modifying existing rebar splices. You can seamlessly alter the splice type for selected intersections and adjust the splice position. Visualize all splice lines within a specific view and perform actions such as moving, rotating, or deleting one or multiple splices. This new feature significantly improves user efficiency and productivity in modeling accurate reinforcement of concrete structures. You can also visually inspect bars that require length adjustments. Using Revit filters, you can highlight bars exceeding the maximum length and require splitting or splicing for much enhanced rebar quality control. Revit 2025, you can disable rebar constraints on individual bar handles to block modifications of bars when the concrete geometry changes. Disable all the handles, reset the current, or reset all the handles. Once the constraint is disabled for the selected bar handle, the respective handle will not react to changes of the concrete faces. You can manually drag a bar handle with a disabled constraint. You can edit constraints for multiple bars and disable all the constraints. You can check the rebar constraint status by using schedules or filters. All in all, this feature gives you enhanced control over rebars, allowing you to prevent unexpected rebar changes when the concrete geometry changes. Previously, you couldn't split steel elements when they had defined steel connections. Now, splitting steel framing and columns that have steel connections has been enabled to ensure a consistent ribbon experience for accessing split and split with gap for steel members. Now you can more easily use steel connection automation since it has been simplified, letting you automate more connections using less scripts. Select where to place the steel connections um, and just Couple examples, double side connections placed on main beam and at margin intersection with two secondary beams. Double side connections placed at the intersection of main beam body with two secondary beams. Uh, connections placed on main beam and in corner intersection with secondary beams. Connections placed on main beam and in margin intersection with secondary beams and connections placed at the intersection of a main beam body with the secondary beam. All right, let's see what we got here. If you have already installed Revit 2025, you might have noticed this. The Revit Personal Accelerator is a Windows application that runs alongside Revit and is designed to optimize performance when working on Revit cloud models. It can be viewed in the Windows system tray. It is installed with Revit and can be updated by either the latest version of Revit or from manage.autodesk.com. When new features are delivered in between Revit releases, there are several fixes included that focus on reliability and stability 
including the system tray I command dialog, and then um, some of the settings in the user interface. So Revit uses Microsoft's .NET framework to manage UI dialogs, facilitate interactions with Windows, operate the Revit API, and more. To stay current with the technology and keep up with regular maintenance, Revit has migrated to .NET 8. This will lead to improved performance across the board and improved third-party developer experience and integrations with modern development environments like Visual Studio Code. Another aspect related to .NET 8 for developers is the comprehensive revamping of all macro functionality within Revit. A new macro management tool replaces the IDE used to create and manage macros in previous versions of Revit, making it significantly easier and providing a more modern integrated development environment. The macro management tool allows you to create and run macros using Visual Studio Code as a more modern and extensible code editor. New approach maintains its support for automatic template generation, making it easier to get started with API development. However, there are fundamental changes to the available features due to this change. The macro manager no longer supports file-based macros. To use existing file-based macros, you must first convert them to application-based macros. Also, Python and VB.NET are no longer supported within the macro environment. Uh, the idea here is that a streamlined and efficient coding experience utilizing Visual Studio Code will enhance productivity through its powerful features and user-friendly interface, ultimately accelerating the software development process. Revit 2025 extensible storage has been restructured to minimize schema conflicts and optimize workflows. Schemas used by add-ons may encounter conflicts when working with multiple files. Improvements have been made to assist you in handling schema conflicts when they occur. These improvements also restructure the usage of extensible storage to mitigate risks and optimize workflows. Based on customer feedback, the discipline filters in the visibility and graphics overrides dialog have been updated. The predefined list filters in the visibility and graphic override dialog have been modified as shown in the table. For example, audiovisual devices now show in both architecture and electrical filters, and mechanical equipment shows an architectural, mechanical, electrical. And piping. I'll give you a minute or two to take a look here, just a few. Some options from the options bar have been moved, the property palette, and to the ribbon. This relocation to the ribbon enhances visibility, while integration into the properties palette increases flexibility and accessibility. It allows for key tips, shortcuts, and other items to be closer to the functionality. So I guess a good example here is um, see a few of the things that you're used to seeing up in the options bar have now just been like moved to the ribbon. Now let's take a look at some MEP specific enhancements. Mark numbers found in the properties will no longer auto-generate as new elements are created. This will help streamline mark numbering for cleaner documents. You can now validate model integrity before updating configuration. Issues are stored and can be viewed as reviewable warnings. This will avoid fabrication rework and save time with model validation. Area and equipment loads will now allow single phase loads. Analytical distribution elements for power source 
bus and transfer switches will now allow single phase in addition to three phase. Uh, analytical transformers will also support single phase and three phase configuration. This will greatly enhance efficiency and design for electrical phasing. Revit now allows users to set a maximum amount of circuits through a new parameter for data and other panels. A warning will show when attempting to connect more circuits than the maximum amounts of circuits. So you can set that right there. Power from low voltage panels, such as fire alarms, can now be accounted for on the power circuit and the equipment feeding it. The system browser reports the load assigned to the power connector. Users will now be able to add and remove types and edit data information in the parts editor. These enhanced features for fabrications parts make part data editing easier in Revit 2025. Part search in the new uh, FDM or Fabrication Data Manager will allow users to get more accurate results with fewer clicks. Users can now filter by part data information, search by part name, and choose between tile and table views. In Revit 2025, you can now upload and assign images for parts in the Fabrication Data Manager. You will be able to generate it from your 3D model or upload an existing image for the part. With this, you can easily upload or assign new Im images for these fabrication parts. All right, so that was an awful lot of stuff to go through for design productivity. Now let's take a look at our sustainability improvements. GBXML schema has uh, been updated to include extended HVAC system data. GBXML export will now include zone equipment, air systems, and water loops. This will ensure more comprehensive modeling of building energy systems. If you are not already familiar with Formon, it offers fantastic features for those looking to scale up their conceptual proposal to the next level. With the updated Forma add-in for Revit, you can turn a Forma proposal into a Revit project. And if you make further updates, you can easily send them back to Forma for more analysis and validation. The add-in provides two different directions of data synchronization. The first is the Forma to Revit transfer, or send to Revit the content of a Forma proposal, then from a Revit project, you can load from Forma the geometric content of a proposal. At present, you can only send a Forma proposal to Revit once. Subsequent modifications made in Forma will not auto-update in Revit unless you start a new Revit project. And secondly, Revit to Forma updates. With updated proposal in Forma, um, with content edited in Revit, that will refine your design iteratively, and you can update a Forma proposal multiple times. You can now access Forma's latest analysis and capabilities by one embodied carbon, which allows architects to better understand the carbon impacts of their projects from day one in a typical project planning process, it offers real-time feedback regarding facade and structural system selections, among other factors. Um, and two, solar analysis. The solar energy analysis assesses the potential of your site to generate electricity from solar panels. The model takes into account local weather conditions and shade from buildings. And three, with flexible housing tool feature, you can swiftly populate your site with diverse range housing types and quickly iterate on your design. This feature accommodates low density housing developments such as row houses 
single housing and duplexes. And four, there is now a new Forma plugin for Rhino, which allows you to pull contextual data from Forma, which maybe that came from Revit, now into Rhino, and then push a model in Rhino back into Forma. All right. And there, there's a you know a few other things. There's a lot to Forma. You know, maybe we'll have to uh, dig into this one in a whole other uh, dedicated webcast. So the next generation of Insight introduces Carbon Insight that helps you analyze carbon impacts and trade-offs between architectural systems associated with the Revit model. So early phase design is recommended uh, because it's analyzing a Revit model. It is ideal for insights and feedback to inform design decisions long before one would do a detailed life cycle assessment of a fully designed Revit model. Uh, the new Carbon Insights plugin for Revit is available to anyone with a Revit or AEC collection subscription. Download the plugin on your Autodesk account. The installers are available under the extensions tab of the uh, Revit product card. Insight leverages the EC3 database to apply materials averages for embodied carbon, providing default carbon factors for these calculations. Users can always override these default factors with their own material carbon factor inputs. After the analysis is finished, Insight opens in your default browser and displays the analytical results in open and flexible dashboards, which offers a starting place for total carbon analysis. You can access the embodied carbon results in three graphs, total embodied carbon by construction, total embodied carbon by material, and embodied carbon intensity by area. Continue reviewing the key sustainable sustainability performance metrics and assign embodied carbon definitions to refine the analysis. Uh, the, the next generation of Insight offers a versatile platform to consume analysis results in adaptable dashboards, metrics, and factors, all customizable to your unique needs. You can create custom metrics to analyze model data using a variety of data points, including model data, analysis results, and other factors or metrics. You can create custom factors and use them within metrics for more detailed analysis, or create personalized custom, custom dashboards for deeper exploration of your model's data, analysis results, results and metrics. And of course, you can edit a dashboard to access the card library, where you can add more model data, drop-down options, bar charts, 3D views, or freeform text. All right, so now let's take a look at the analysis keyframe. Revit 2025, you can use the local coordinate system tools for analytical members and panels to align axis orientation and direction. You can change the alignment of the x-axis orientation for multiple analytical members at the same time. You can use a reference line to align the x-axis orientation, or you can flip the z-axis orientation for multiple analytical panels at the same time. Uh, supports the control of orientation for loads, boundary conditions, results, and much more. Gives a clear understanding of the orientation of analytical elements for accurate structural analysis results interpretation. This leads to improved analytical consistency with structural analysis software and support for proper orientation of structural loads, boundary conditions, analysis results, and more. It will now allow the user to define different operating conditions and times for more accurate energy analysis. You can now easily access building operating schedules under MEP. And here we have the interoperability key theme. 
it manage IFC export mapping settings dialog allows you to create and save templates for IFC exports. Templates are customized by setting the IFC class and predefined type for each Revit category. Customized template settings can be exported for use in other Revit models. Revit supports importing STEP files. STEP, which stands for Standard for the Exchange of Product Data, is a universal format that can be read by most CAD software programs used in architecture. STEP files are a neutral format that is not tied to any specific software. This ensures that the model can be opened and viewed even if the original software used to create it becomes obsolete in the future. This will help users coordinate with non-Revit team members. And another great thing is you can choose the appropriate Revit category when importing step files. Revit has added support for five new horizontal coordinate systems listed on the slide, all of which users can now acquire the coordinates from linked DWG files. Autodesk Informed Design is a platform-based solution that brings manufacturing information to the beginning of the design process to inform design decisions and improve project certainty, prevent errors, and accelerate customers' workflows. The Autodesk Informed Design add-in for Revit allows designers to utilize product manufacturers' products with the constraints defined by the manufacturers in their design models. With informed design for Revit, designers can browse catalogs of known manufacturable building products for use in Revit projects. They can tailor building products to align with your building's requirements, ensuring compliance with manufacturer special specifications, and also ensure design decisions are accurate and manufacturable to reduce project risk and prevent errors. With informed design for Revit, you can also browse the list of validated product variations to place instances quickly and easily. Also modify the values of existing instances to configure replacements and swap out-of-date products with the manufacturer's latest release. As Revit is currently recommended as central to physical and analytical model coordination and its analytical model geometry can be accurate and fully versatile, the nature of the Revit to robot interoperability was adjusted. The Revit 2025 release introduced new local coordinate system tools for analytical members and panels to align axis orientation and direction. Now, the link provides enhanced bi-directional transfer of local coordinate systems for analytical members and panels resulting in greater consistency between programs. Additionally, the transfer of members that have been split have been enhanced. Structural engineers can also find new features for detailed steel design in Revit 2025. They can transfer and synchronize single part marks and assembly marks for steel elements and for structural steel connection components from advanced steel to Revit. This allows them to create general arrangement drawings for steel projects using Revit to better connect it across design, fabrication, and construction. All right, now let's take a look at the cloud data enhancement here. Uh, linking coordination models from Autodesk Docs was released last year in Revit 2024. It enabled a whole new coordination workflow for Revit users. The reference coordination model keeps project files light because it doesn't load unnecessary data and also helps keep your work in sync with your collaborators. It can serve as reference data as you 
can snap to it and perform basic dimension. In uh, Revit 2025, you can now automatically check the latest consecutive versions of a link coordination model using the coordination model changes palette. The palette displays an overview of the added, modified, or deleted objects, which are highlighted on the model too. You can filter the categories to only show added, modified, or deleted objects by deselecting the categories that you do not want to display. This feature is supported for coordination models coming from RVT and DWG file formats. The last key theme here has some great improvements for documentation efficiency. So let's take a look at these now. This one is pretty cool. Sheet Collections allows you to assign any sheet in the model into flexible groupings that can be referenced across Revit, such as in views, schedules, and filters. We now have the ability to have multiple sheets with the same number. Each sheet can only exist in one location, either inside a specific sheet collection or directly in the model. For example, you could have sheet G001 used once in the model, once in collection submission one, and once in collection and submission two. You will receive an error message when moving a sheet into a sheet collection if the sheet number is already utilized in that collection, or when renumbering a sheet to a value already in use, just like you're used to seeing. So this also includes two new read-only parameters, uh, sheet collection and referencing sheet collection, which means that these parameters are available in the following family categories. So you can use them in view titles, view references, call out heads, elevation marks, section marks, title blocks, and they can be used in labels and view filters and sheet and view schedules. Uh, and as an added convenience, you can drag and drop sheets in the project browser to organize multiple sheets into or out of our sheet collections. So yeah, just, just to reiterate here, if you have a section call out, you could actually add the um, sheet collection name to that call out bubble with the fact that they've added that parameter in there. So it's pretty, pretty neat enhancement there. Uh, the Browser organization for sheets and views can utilize the sheet collection parameter to filter, group, and sort views and sheets. Sheet collections allow creation of new sheets directly from the project browser node. When creating new sheets on the collection, Revit assigns that collection and attempts to continue the new sheet numbering based on the most recent sheet in that collection. And the export slash print Dialog includes each sheet collection as a dedicated display filter toggle. Uh, this will support precise selection of sheets in one or more collections. Uh, view references are now available as a category for view filters and include the sheet collection information for the target view. This is a nice little add here to manage multiple project materials. Simply select them and right click to choose between deleting them from your model or adding them to a custom library. When working on the appearance tab of the material browser, utilize the drop down menu next to the material thumbnail to configure the rendering settings for the thumbnail image. The newly added quick rendering setting expedites the generation of the thumbnail image when changing your material selection. The new thumbnail render setting is faster and consumes fewer CPU resources. You can now align and distribute multiple keynotes, text notes and tags. I'm pretty happy to finally have this feature added and I know I'll use it a lot. Previously, when exporting the PDF from Revit, uh, your Revit session would need to complete the PDF export process before you could continue working. Now the PDF export process can be run as a background process, allowing you to continue working on your model while the export process completes. Uh, the method used to calculate room perimeter values 
has been updated in Revit 2025, resulting in improved accuracy. The room perimeter now accounts for inner loops within rooms. Additionally, the method for calculating the perimeter of round rooms or round with arc segments has been enhanced. Users may notice changes to the room perimeters when a project is upgraded to Revit 2025. Now in Revit 2025, you can display bar bending information in the rebar tag to create drawings with detailed fabrication instructions. To enhance the readability of the drawings, you are now able to move the dimensions and tags that are automatically placed within the bending details on the drawings, eliminating text overlaps with just a few clicks. You can align tags and realistic bending details. Tags are positioned relative to the bounding box of the bending detail. In details is available too. Uh, now you can set up the presentation options for multiple rebar sets at once. Thanks to this capability, you can create reinforcement floor plans more easily by managing the presentation options for multiple rebar sets at once. In the previous version, when you created a connection and then made a detailed drawing with dimensions and descriptions from that connection, after breaking such a macro uh, using the break option, the dimensions and descriptions would scatter. Now you can tag and dimension individual components of steel connections and the existing tags and dimensions are preserved if you break the steel connection. Revit will now let you select analytical duct and pipe segments in the analytical model categories. This will allow the user to easily access duct and pipe pressure drops and associated tag categories. Pressure loss data will be available in schedules and can be shown in the properties palette. Uh, Revit will now allow the user to show material gauge as a new parameter for MEP fabrication ductwork. This new parameter will be very useful for documentation by allowing users to place tags showing material gauge and show it on fabrication schedules. All right, so I know we really went through a lot of material today. So thank you very much for your time and attention. And with that, um, I would be happy to kind of take a look at the uh, Q&A here. So if you have a question and didn't have a chance yet, please type it in and we will I via the question or chat panel or over the uh, voice in the meeting. And if we don't have an answer or we miss it or we run out of time, uh, it, it'll get added to our report and I will follow up with the reply. So if, if you're sitting on any questions, feel free to ask away now. Let me see here. So while while you guys are typing, if you are, um, I went ahead and added some contact information. So if you have any questions later, or you just want to send me a link or show something you're working on, feel free to reach out uh, to me on any of the platforms listed here. I'm, I'm not even joking about this. I provide this information here so you can use it. I personally love seeing the things you guys are working on and hear about hearing about all the challenges you're facing in your day-to-day -day design work uh, and also just getting to know everyone. So feel free to reach out at any time. I'll just keep on doing here. All right, so I'm not seeing any questions. So hopefully everyone's all set on that and if not see how we're doing on time here i think i'm ready to hand it back over here to ashley okay well thank you all for attending today um and thank you dan for the presentation um i did in the chat panel include some uh, links for 
contacting us and for our training schedule that's coming up for further um, training on all of these topics. Um, and it does look like one question popped up. Dan, I don't know if you want to cover that. Oh, okay. Yeah, let's take a look here. Uh, looks like, yeah, this question is about the Revit space required for 25. Um, I, I installed it via direct download, and I don't recall exact. I think it was less than 12 gigs and that probably included the entire library which you don't even have to install anymore so if you if you do want everything you probably need like 12 12 gigs all right and that looks like we've got another question here um Yeah, so there, there's been a lot of improvements on um, speeding up, saving, and synchronizing. So yeah, great stuff. All right, yeah. Um, so if there's any other questions, feel free to ask. If not, uh, you know, just feel free to reach out. Okay, um, and also just a reminder that a short survey will pop up as we close down. Um, you can also leave any lingering questions there we can get back to you um, and also um, if you want to receive that AIA continuing education credit you can leave your AIA number and question number four of that survey we can get that submitted for you also um, a email will come to you tomorrow which will contain a link for the recording so you can watch this again and I think that's all I have so um, again thank you for attending today and, and have a great day everyone Bye.